consistent is exactly right. He's ruthlessly efficient in front of goal. Jared Stroud already has nine goals and six, six assists at the midway point of the season. Had two goals and an assist in the first half of that thrashing against Atlanta United 2. Stroud typically wears the captain's armband for Red Bulls 2, and I expect him to be extremely active in tonight's match. When you can look at Memphis's side, obviously a team that struggled to score, but they're looking to light a fire in Brandon Allen, perhaps, and get that weapon lit tonight for their offense. Absolutely. Brandon Allen was acquired June 26th from the Tampa Bay Rowdy, so he's only been with 901 FC for less than a month. He's got a goal on the season that was scored with the Rowdies. Uh, I thought Brandon Allen was a little bit unlucky last week to have his goal disallowed against Nashville, but he'll have another crack at it tonight against his first former club, New York Red Bulls 2. Looking forward to a good one tonight between Nashville, or rather, between Memphis 901 FC and New York Red Bulls 2 here at AutoZone Park. Stay with us, USL Championship Soccer's next. I can't believe I said Nashville. All right. It happens. I mean, we had it right, you know, the first. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah. it is what it is, right? It is what it is. You got to be perfect every time. Exactly. That's, that's the only solution. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know what? Brings. It's a pleasure to be with you yeah, this evening. JJ, this Memphis side coming off a difficult 2-0 loss against Nashville on Wednesday. And this team they have to bounce back against. One of the top squads in the league. Going to be a tough test. Yeah, absolutely right. It's all right. We appreciate you. We trust us. We, we've messed it up enough times, so we're, yep. we, we're forgiven of that. Um, I don't know how Tim Mulkwing wears the suit all the time. <laughs> I just, that it heat? just boggles my mind. Man, man. I promise you I would never be out there in a suit. I don't see any other coaches doing that either. N not full suit, no. Mm. No, they might wear, you know, slacks and a dress shirt. The right. sleeves rolled up. But he's, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a guy that means business. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. I wonder if that's a uh, that comes from upper management. I don't think it does. Oh. It's probably, I, I doubt it. I think they would let him wear. That's a that's an interesting question. If you I don't really think they would make him. No, I think they'd say whatever you Tim, whatever you feel. Craig's in a suit tonight, but he wasn't in a suit the other night when I saw him. I think he was in a suit against Nashville. He's usually he's maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe, it was, maybe it was Peter. I was thinking of. He's usually suited and booted. I can't remember. Suited and booted. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got down to it on that on that last one. <laughs> we did. We yeah. did, without a doubt. Yeah. It'll happen. It'll happen. It will happen. Ugh. It's a Big Apple vibe in the Bluff City this weekend. Hamilton at the Orpheum and Memphis 901 FC playing host to New York Red Bulls 2 USL Championship Soccer on Saturday night. From 
the corner of 3rd and Union, we welcome you into another USL Championship Soccer broadcast as Memphis 901 FC plays host to New York Red Bulls 2. Alongside J.J. Greer, I'm Tyler Springs. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. J.J., this Memphis side coming off a difficult 2-0 loss against Nashville on Wednesday, and this team they have to bounce back against one of the top squads in the league. Going to be a tough test. Yeah, absolutely right. New York Red Bulls, too, are a fantastic side in the top five in the USL Championship Eastern Conference. Coming off of an 8-1 thrashing against Atlanta United, too, last week. So really high-powered offense. I expect 901 FC to potentially maybe change the formation a bit, go five in the back, maybe have a few guys coming in off the bench that haven't had a lot of time. So expect to see a few more changes from Tim O'Queen's side. When you look at this threatening New York Red Bulls FC side, or rather this New York Red Bulls 2 side, you look first at Jared Stroud because absent Tom Barlow, he's their most consistent offensive threat. Consistent is exactly right. He's ruthlessly efficient in front of goal. Jared Stroud already has nine goals and six, six assists at the midway point of the season. Had two goals and an assist in the first half of that thrashing against Atlanta United 2. Stroud typically wears the captain's armband for Red Bulls 2, and I expect him to be extremely active in tonight's match. When you can look at Memphis's side, obviously a team that struggled to score, but they're looking to light a fire in Brandon Allen, perhaps, and get that weapon lit tonight for their offense. Absolutely. Brandon Allen was acquired June 26th from the Tampa Bay Rowdy, so he's only been with 901 FC for less than a month. He's got a goal on the season that was scored with the Rowdies. Uh, I thought Brandon Allen was a little bit unlucky last week to have his goal disallowed against Nashville, but he'll have another crack at it tonight against his first former club, New York Red Bulls 2. Looking forward to a good one tonight between Nashville, or rather, between Memphis 901 FC and New York Red Bulls 2 here at AutoZone Park. Stay with us, USL Championship Soccer is next. Actually, read yeah. the key. It's a very literal <laughs> type okay. of translation. It's all right. Translation. Live from AutoZone Park this evening in Memphis, Tennessee. It's Memphis 901 taking on. New York Red Bulls, too. Hopefully a win in store for the Memphis 901 side coming off a tough loss against Nashville. Let's take on the starting lineups as they present to us New York Red Bulls, too. What do you see? Yeah, I think, you know, we, we spoke about him earlier in the pregame. Number 50, Jared Stroud, is a really complete, just a really good soccer player overall. Nine goals and six assists on the year at the midway point of the season. I think as he goes, I think the New York Red Bulls, too, goes. And as for the Memphis 901 FC, you mentioned there might be some defensive changes perhaps. That looks like the way Tim O'Queen goes. Yeah, it looks like we have five in the back tonight for Memphis 901 FC. Looks like we'll have less than Paul slotting in to the midfield for Adam Najem. I, I expect we'll see Adam Najem come in off the bench tonight. 
As for our keys to the game, Memphis 901 FC's keys to the match are presented by My City Rides. See how much you'll save when you scoot. JJ, what do you think tonight? Yeah, I think Memphis 901 FC has to have a high energy from the start. Red Bulls 2 are a high energy, high pressing team, and you, you really need to match that energy from from kickoff. Fin finish chances, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Get the ball to your goal scorers, Elliot Collier and Brandon Allen, and see what they can do for you. Brandon Allen still yet to have his first official strike for Memphis 901 FC. Tim Mulqueen certainly hoping this can be a breakthrough night against one of the teams that's near the top of the table, second overall in the Eastern Conference standings in the USL Championship League. They will be a tough task for Memphis this evening, especially with 901 FC having seen them once already this year. They lost 3-2 in a match against this New York Red Bulls two side. That was in New York back in March. Both these teams in different places. John Wolnick Probably feeling pretty good after an 8-1 victory over Atlanta last week. 8-1, not a result you see very often, J.J. Grimm. Not a result you see very often. And, and going back and looking at that game, I think it was just that relentless pressure that the Red Bulls organization is known for. You know, and it's it's been hot in New York, and it's and it's and it's quite warm here in Memphis tonight. So you know, I don't I don't really expect the Heat to really change how they do things. I think it'll be business as usual for Red Bulls too tonight. First kick coming up momentarily. It is Jeff Caldwell back between the pipes tonight for Memphis 901 FC wearing the old gold kit. Hopefully a little bit better for Memphis than what Scott Levine was able to do on Wednesday. Not that Levine played poorly, but Nashville able to get one goal on a counterattack and another one on a near touch in the box that was played in. Maybe Levine could have come off the line for that a little bit more. Caldwell thought to be the better of the two keepers and glad to have him back. Yeah, I think Jeff Caldwell is your is your I think he's proven himself to be your number one keeper. You know, he's he's got an MLS contract for a reason. He's an extremely talented keeper. And, you know, as you said, no, no disrespect to Scott Levine, but he's had great performances. And I think he can he can learn a lot from, from Jeff Caldwell moving forward. Evan Loro, the opposing keeper for New York Red Bulls two. It is Memphis that starts off with the first kick. We are underway here at third and Union between Memphis 901 FC and New York Red Bulls two. Red Bulls in red, as you might imagine. Memphis in their home, maybe blue kits. Pushed ahead for Brandon Allen, but a little bit too far. You're looking for Brandon Allen earlier there. That ball played a little bit long, a little bit out of Brandon Allen's reach, but you know, I, I expect Brandon Allen to be really active, really busy tonight against his against his former club. And he was, you know, really unlucky to have that goal disallowed last week against Nashville. So, you know, we'll we'll see what he can do tonight. Both Allen and Dan Metzger in the starting lineup for Tim Mulqueen, those two former New York Red Bulls two players. Allen, of course, the USL Cup Final MVP when Red Bulls won it a couple of years ago. Memphis lucky to have his services. Absolutely, and that was an incredible season for Brandon Allen. You know, just scoring goals left and right, scoring goals for fun. You know, there's a few penalties in there, but you still have to score the penalties. You know, if, if he gets the ball in and around the 18-yard box, around the six-yard box, he's absolutely clinical. New York Red Bulls, two. Four first-half goals. And the most recent match against Atlanta United. Oof. This one tests Caldwell, but it scoots by the mouth with nobody touching it. Really dangerous ball there served in for Marcus Epps. He's one to watch as well. He's a very direct player with a lot of flair and really has really good service. Epps, like Wesley Sharpie, former USF Bull at the college level. Consistently playing one of the forward spots. John Wolnick. As Red Bulls trying to get something going early on. It's really good to see Mark Birch back on the field for 901 FC. You know, I thought against Nashville, the team the team did, did okay, but I, I feel like they really missed his leadership out there, especially on that set piece. You know, Mark Birch, as, he, as you see him get this interception here, he just really brings so much in terms of leadership and, and calmness on the ball. Speaking of interceptions, here comes New York with their first opportunity. Ewan Granderson there to stonewall them. Yeah, it looks like an offside call for our assistant referee on the side there. That one had to have been close. As you see the replay here, ball served in. Really good ball, Marcus Epps. Oh uh, yeah, clearly offside there. If he would have held up his, his run just a just a half a second earlier, New York Red Bulls two would have been in. 
Daniel Gutierrez, our referee this evening. Nick Balser, Ben Pilgrim, the assistants. Jessica Beatty, the fourth official for this USL championship match. Sharpie up the left side. Morgan Hackworth going to be beating the ball there. Yeah, it's good to see Morgan Hackworth back on the field and showing a lot of energy there. I think, you know, Tim O'Queen and, and, and his side could really use sometimes just, just pure energy and pure youth, um, youthful legs from Morgan Hackworth chase, chasing down that ball and forcing Sean Nealis to kick the ball out of bounds. Sharpie finding Hackworth in the corner. You can see Hackward's work rate just causing problems for that back line, just pure effort, and earns aside a, a corner kick. Hackworth, of course, the son of Louisville City FC coach John Hackworth, former U.S. men's national team assistant. Kind of expect the coaches' kids to be the people with the work rate, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's first and foremost, you know, from you know from any soccer player really. You want to you want to put in the work first and foremost, and then all the tricks and flicks can can come after that. So the first corner of the match for Memphis. Played in to the center. A threatening look. Wow. Close, but no cigar. Fantastic ball served in from Cam Lindley, as usual. And Brandon Allen actually had a fantastic chance there. Put it on target, but a good defensive play by that Red Bulls 2 back line. Grandison. It's excellent strength from you and Grandison. An asset on the back line who's, who's been playing further toward the back more recently for this side. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Ewan Grandison was a solid player in the center of midfield for 901 FC, and then Tim Mulqueen needed a little help on his back line, so slotted him at right back, and he hasn't disappointed. Has put in really solid performances. Took a really hard knock against Hartford a couple of matches ago where he had to have a full 360-degree bandage wrapped around his head, but he has not missed a stride. Oh, yeah, he's a tough guy. Early moments, and this is Jared Stroud with control. Sharpie trying not to let it in. This is close. Just what a tackle there from Captain Mark Birch. So West Sharpie losing that individual battle on that header with Marcus Epps. And Jorgensen with a fantastic opportunity. Mark Birch with a fantastic save. Looked like Jeff Caldwell was, was there as well, but Mark Birch gets this tackle completely right. Last ditch effort. That is pro defending from the veteran Mark Birch. But the danger is still thick. Lemma will play it forward. It's an excellent defensive header from Hauser Ramsey. Had the ball a good 30 yards out of his own box and allows his team to step forward. In once again, Sharpie there. It's a good header from Sharpie there, but it's a little alarming to see a few Red Bulls, two players. Free in the box. Leston Paul fun. knocked down on the break. That's going to be a foul. It's a good run out from Leston Paul. Strong in the run. It's a good professional foul from Kofi in the middle of the field for, for Red Bulls, too. First start for Leston Paul since April the 27th, believe it or not. And that's going to be actually a yellow card. Yeah, I think that's the right call from our referee, Daniel Gutierrez. Professional foul in the middle of the field from Kofi. Just straight into the back of Leston Paul. You saw Leston Paul kind of put his back in front of in front of Kofi and draw that foul. So I think that's definitely a yellow card, but probably a smart yellow card from Kofi, although it is early in the game to be getting to be getting a card. Seventh minute of action and Kofi already has picked up the car. So Birch now scanning the landscape with an opportunity for Memphis 901 FC. They are the better team when they score first. Birch plays it into Collier. Using the head, but Evan Loro on top of it. Yeah, not a bad ball from Mark Birch, and good on Elliot Collier to win that ball, but unfortunately not close enough to, to for Brandon Allen to get a foot on that one. Memphis this season. Nine times have allowed the other team to score first, and they have not won any of those nine matches. Would love to get on the board first. Absolutely. So you can see, Tyler, how, how vitally important it is for 901 FC's confidence to get on the board first, especially against this high-powered attacking Red Bulls two side. Lindley a chance to set up with Collier knocked down. Metzger, the former Red Bull, 
dispossessed. Yeah, it's an excellent takeaway from Marcus Epps. Got a lot of space. Oh, Caldwell, a, save. a great diving save to his right. Yeah, Marcus Epps caught Dan Metzger dwelling on the ball there, picked his pocket and drove down the field about 40 yards before unleashing a, a really good strike. It looked like it was headed pretty close to that back post and is a great save in the end from Jeff Caldwell. Strong right hand, great parry for Jeff Caldwell. Burst trying to just make the angle hard there. Got in the way, but didn't get a piece of the ball. That was Caldwell all the way. Yeah, you saw Jeff Caldwell get a full right hand on that. Lama plays back post. Headed away by Collier. And this will be another corner. You see the problems that Chris Lima causes with that left foot. In swinger and out swinger. Looks like he's taking corner kicks from both sides. And New York Red Bulls, too, have a, have a lot of size on their squad with Sean Nealis at center back and, and, and some of their other bigger players. Nealis, a goal scored in that four goal first half last week against Atlanta when what became an 8 1 route. Lima had four. This one toward the six yard box. Memphis able to keep a thick enough crowd in there to not allow a threat. The move from Chris Lima. Oh, oh no. Caldwell wow. allows one to the far post. Thought there might be a flag up there. Not the case. Jordan Scarlett, the goal. Yeah, Jordan Scarlett gets on the end of this one. Fantastic ball from, from Chris Lemma. You saw him chop with his right foot. You know, he's not a right-footed player. He's a, he's a fully left-footed player. He whips in an excellent ball to the back post, and Jordan Scarlett was all alone back there. Jeff Cottle asking for the offside, but our linesman didn't see it. What a ball, what a goal for Red Bulls, too. An outstanding play across the mouth, the goal. Yeah, it looked like Jordan Scarlett. You can't see the ball played in from Chris Lima on that play, but it looked like Jordan Scarlett did a good job of holding up his run. Big, strong player Jordan Scarlett is. Feels like they've got a gang of those. Yeah, they've been in they've been in the weight room for sure. Red Bulls too have. It's not the start that you want, though, from if you're not a one FC and as Red Bulls two are off to the races again. No kidding. We just talked about how little success Memphis had had when conceding the first goal. And they are playing from behind here in the 10th minute, make it the 11th minute. Leston you know, Paul trying to change it. Paul knocked down be from behind. This should be a foul. Yeah, I thought that there was a lot of contact there in the back of Leston Paul again, but Daniel Gutierrez did, did, saw nothing there. Did not go the way the 901 thought it might. It's a tough start for 901 FC. You know, I thought the first 10 minutes of the game, they've been you know, playing pretty well, but they were giving up a lot of corner kicks. You know, I think that was about three corner kicks almost in a row for Red Bulls, too. And if you give a guy like Chris Lim on his left foot that many opportunities, it's going to spell danger. Yes. Worked over toward the left. The strike Oof. just past the outstretched hands of Caldwell. And you can see Chris Lim, he's really feeling himself after that four goal performance last week against Atlanta United, too. He's got the green light now to shoot from anywhere. This one wasn't too far past Jeff Caldwell's near post. You can see on the replay here, a swerving shot from Chris Lemma. Might have had, looked like he had Jeff Caldwell beat, but fortunately for 901 FC, this one sails wide. They'll take their small miracles where they can get them. Down 1-0, a long way to go here in the 12th minute. It's good to see the Bluff City Mafia continue to spur on their side. Doesn't matter what the score is, they're all, they'll always cheer on 901 FC. They've been an important part of stabilizing this first year franchise in the USL. Big crowds always drawn to these matches at our Ozone Park. And elsewhere, I should mention, they've played a few times at Micro Soccer Complex in Collierville and other places in and around the Mid-South area. Absolutely, all around town. Everybody talks about, you know, the crazy people with the drums and the flags and smoke as we have another chance here. That looked like it may have been a handball in the box, but Caldwell able to collect. Jorgensen has been in the thick of everything offensively, even without scoring. Yeah, Jorgensen is a, he's, a, he's a solid player. You know, he, he might not you might not recognize him too much throughout the course of a game because he, he holds up the ball well and he allows the the stars of this team like Jared Stroud and Marcus Epps and Tom Barlow, although he's not here tonight, to, to really get forward and, and get on the score sheet. Played out wide, Epps. Now Paul. Less than Paul in trouble. Can he get out of the bear trap? It's well done from Less than Paul to hold that ball Woo. up. He's under a lot of pressure. Wins his side a goal kick. Well done from Less than Paul. 
Not too much assistance there to Leston Paul from the teammates on 901 FC, but when you're backed in against the line there, what's your best option? Yeah, you know, if you, there wasn't a lot of options for Leston Paul, you know, right on the end line there, and I think if, if another player goes and tries to help him, then you're bringing more defenders to him, so in the end, Weston Paul, uh, Leston Paul, excuse me, does really well to, to earn a goal kick for his side. Now Lindley will zip it ahead, too far ahead of Morgan Hackworth, to be fair. Yeah, it's not something you usually see from Ken Lindley, you know, misplacing or those longer balls. Usually he's deadly accurate with with his longer balls, with his longer diagonals. I think, you know, that goal from Red Bulls 2 has 901 FC a little bit flustered, so they'll need to settle down. They'll need to get Ken Lindley on the ball and, and move the ball around and regroup. The opening strike, if you're just joining us, from Jordan Scarlett to put New York Red Bulls 2 up 1-0 thus far. You see the strength there from Jordan Scarlett once again. You know, it's going to be really hard to just beat Jordan Scarlett and Sean Nealis in behind and with pace. They're two extremely athletic defenders, so 901 FC is going to have to get creative and have to, you know, break those lines and play those through balls on the ground and, and with sharp movement, give and goes, ones and twos in the attacking third. Sharpie and Hackworth trying to get control on the left side. And time and time again, New York Red Bulls 2 has kept them from doing so. Epps and Sharpie giving each other the business over there. Yeah, it's excellent defending from West Sharpie. You know, being physical but not giving up a foul, making Marcus Epps keep, keep facing his own goal, not allowing him to turn. Epps. Looks like there's a foul called on West Sharpie. Bit of a high boot there from West Sharpie and Marcus Epps kind of lets him know, kind of milks it a little bit, but it was a high boot from West Sharpie and Daniel Gutierrez makes the call. So this will be a kick for New York Red Bulls. Sharpie the one having the conversation with Gutierrez here. Yeah, I don't think, you know, he's giving him a talking to, but I, I definitely don't think that's worth a yellow card. As you can see on the replay here, the boot was a little bit high from West Sharpie and caught Marcus Epps on the follow through a little bit. That does hurt. That does hurt. So I think that's a, a good call from Daniel Gutierrez. Lama will bend it in once again. Right toward Caldwell, who will punch it away. It's another really good ball from, from Chris Lemma. Right on that pecan six yard box will be some dangers here. Stroud, uh oh. Tangled up with Grandison inside the box. Yeah, surprise there was no foul called there on Ewan Grandison, and Tim Mulqueen thought the same. But good strength from Ewan Grandison. Incidental contact. Metzger trying to win it in the midfield. Whistle dead first. You can see the frustration from the 901 FC players. Leston Paul letting Daniel Gutierrez know, you know, hey, we're getting fouled too, and, and we don't feel like we're getting a lot of calls. But Daniel Gutierrez trying to keep the, keep the game fair, keep it calm. A little bit of contact there between Leston Paul and Chris Lemma. Scarlett. All the way through. This was the point in the match between Red Bulls 2 and Atlanta where things got a little out of hand. Three goals in the space of four minutes. 901 FC, key not to allow something like that to go down. You're exactly right, Ty. That's why it's super important that 901 FC not put their head down, not feel sorry for themselves, and not let this heat affect them. There's still a long way to go in this game. And the last thing you want is, is to go down 2 0. If you go back to the first time these two sides play, that came back on March the 29th. Such that. Adam Najem actually drew first blood in that game in the 11th minute. And then New York Red Bulls 2 went on a three goal run before Mark Burge could actually answer back in the 61st minute. And Memphis could never get closer than that final 3-2 line. Yeah, that was a fantastic match. Not only FC was in, was in decent form during that early point of the season. So, you know, a little bit different stretch right now, a tougher stretch right now for 901 FC, but it only takes a game or, or two games to really turn the season around. 
Brandison on the throw here. And this will go the other way. Lindley trying to protect, and Caldwell will sweep it clear. Yeah, it's good awareness from Cam Lindley and good tracking as well, too. He was knowing that that ball might not have made it out of bounds, so pass it back to his keeper, Jeff Caldwell, who clears it out of bounds. It's a good hold at play as well from Brandon Allen. Here's Brandon Allen, former Tampa Bay Rowdy. Trying to find the right groove. This is good to see from Dan Metzger checking back to his center backs, getting on the ball, trying to calm this game down and, and start to, you know, impose your will a little bit on New York Red Bulls, Red Bulls too. I think they've started to, to more so impose their will on 901 FC. So if 901 FC can, can settle this game down and start to push the ball forward and get meaning, meaningful possession in the New York Red Bulls two defensive third, I think this game can start to switch a little bit. Bezacourt. It's excellent hold up play from Bezacourt. Luba. Some fantastic move from Luba. Janos Luba. Metzger there on the intercept. And now a goal kick. Luba and Jared Stroud unable to, to connect on that one two there, but you can see the, the work rate and effort of Jared Stroud. The New York Red Bulls, two talisman, nine goals and six assists already on the year. So I expect for him to, to continue to be active tonight. Goals on goals on goals. This New York Red Bulls, two side. And any one of those front three, whether it be Jorgensen or Marcus Epps or Jared Stroud, are, are more than capable of having multiple games. So far, the difference is one. Jordan Scarlett, the man to slot one home. On a cross in from Chris Lemma. Scarlet header. Back in the 11th minute. Uh, uncharacteristic mistouch there from Mark Birch, but good one back from Cam Lindley. And now you've sent Brandon Allen ahead, but Evan Loro out to claim it. Yeah, tough ball for Brandon Allen. A little bit long, and th that's not so much Brandon Allen's game as to be played in behind. He's he's more so a player that likes to hold the ball up and likes the ball in tight spaces. So uh, uh, I'd like to see him you know, get the ball on top of the 18 yard box and in between lines and, and really connect from there. Jorgensen had a chance there. Birch able to tackle it away. Yeah, good step from Birch. Uh-oh, a second. And this time Caldwell calls off everyone. See Red Bulls 2 getting a, a little bit too much time and space on top of the 18 yard box. Fortunate for 901 FC there. I believe Jorgensen took a little bit of a longer touch. Select is the official ball supplier of the USL Championship and many of the finest leagues in the world since 1947. Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation for the latest select products and special offers. Please visit SelectSportAmerica.com. 1-0 New York Red Bulls 2 over Memphis 901 FC. Second meeting this season between these two sides. New York took the first one back in March by a 3-2 count. Alongside J.J. Greer, I'm Tyler Springs. USL Championship Soccer on CW30 and ESPN+. Plus. The 901 coming off a difficult loss against in-state 2B rival, Nashville SC. And facing a very difficult foe here. One of three consecutive matches where they will play top seven teams in the Eastern Conference standings. So the game has settled down a little bit for, for 901 FC. They're still having a bit of problems with that, that pressure from New York Red Bulls 2 and the, and the ball movement and the creativity of New York Red Bulls 2. But so far have, have, have been, you know, after that goal have been fairly solid defensively led by the captain, Mark Birch. 
Stroud wants to turn and play it forward to the corner. Kept alive. Luba feeding back to Stroud. Collier working on him. It's good defensive work from Elliott Collier. I don't know if you want your 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 winger, your your striker that far back defensively, but at the same time, it's good work rate from Elliott Collier. Collier trying to give Stroud the strip. You see three New York Red Bulls, two players surrounding Elliott Collier winning that ball back. Epps trying to make himself a target, but intercepted first by Lindley. It's well done from Cam Lindley. He read that pass from Kyle Duncan the, the entire way. Sharpie ahead. Here's Brandon Allen on a long run. Oh, it's a great ball from West Sharpie, but even better defending from Jordan Scarlett. They can't get Allen free, and Lindley is down. Looks to be holding his wrist. Cam Lindley is going to need to be attended to here in the 24th minute. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happened with Cam Lindley. Looked like there might have been a little contact on that play there where he stole the ball and then had several New York Red Bulls, two players surrounding him. Might be an opportunity for an inadvertent hydration break for both sides. Absolutely, his teammates in Red Bulls too, I imagine, will, will thank Cam Lindley, but hopefully he's okay. Take a look. You might get a chance to see what's happened to Lindley's left wrist. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, it looked like it bent a little bit awkwardly there as he was trying to support his weight. There's a way that's supposed to go, and that's not it. Yeah, that's one of those that really hurt at the time, and I think during the game we'll probably forget about it, but after the game, you know, he'll definitely be, be feeling it on that, on that wrist a little bit. Once the adrenaline dies down. Absolutely. Hopefully there's no structural damage, but... Good thing for Cam Lindley, he, he, he doesn't need his, his wrist or his hands. Not a game where that is essential. Paul, while he's got a moment. Trying to cozy up to Gutierrez a little bit, much as one can. Well done, well done. Good sportsmanship. Lindley back on, ball back in. It's like a Nothing that a quick little tape job can't fix for Cam Lindley. Red Bull's not wasting time. Sir. Colwell claims in the box. It's a really good ball there from Sean Nillis. Looking for Vincent Bezicourt on top of the 18-yard box, but faced a double team there. Good marking from Jacob Hauser-Ramsey and, and Mark Birch. Grandison knocked down from behind. A lot of contact on that play there from Ewan Grandison and Jared Stroud. This will be a bit of an opportunity here from Cam Lindley. Pretty close to midfield, but Cam Lindley has a seemingly unlimited range of passing, so we'll see if he launches this one into the box for 901 FC. Paul and Metzger conspiring at the top of the 18. This one sent far post. Nothing they can put together. Yeah, that was a... Pretty good driven ball from Cam Lindley into that far post, but good defending from the New York Red Bulls two back line. As we mentioned, Memphis playing three consecutive teams all ranked in the top seven in the Eastern Conference standings. Ottawa awaits next. And they just see Nashville, Paul, Trying to make something happen, but a down player draws the whistle. Yeah, interesting call there from Daniel Gutierrez as he waited a considerable amount of time to, to make that call. Not really sure what happened on that play. I know there, there looked to be some contact with Jean Coffey in there. Coffey will rise again. See on the replay here, yeah, it looked to be a high boot from Brandon Allen, but you know, nothing dirty there. He was going for the ball, and unfortunately, you know, his follow through, and he's got Sean Nealis behind him that kind of pushes him and, and makes his momentum with that foot create contact with John Coffey's thigh there. But John Coffey, as you can see, he's a, he's, a, he's a big lad, big, strong guy. I think he'll be okay. Targeting Epps. 
Lindley to volley away. Right back where you started. Not one FC having a really hard time crossing midfield and getting possession past midfield. This New York Red Bulls two pressure is absolutely relentless. And the passing has been a little bit off tonight for 901 FC, but you got to give Red Bulls two credit for that as well. Luba. Coffee. Attacked by Metzger. Dan Metzger will not get a chance. Yeah, Dan Metzger got a little bit frustrated there. He's a hardworking guy, one of the hardest working players in the team, but it's excellent hold up play from John Coffey. You can see the, the the quickness and the strength of John Coffey holding up that ball. Now Stroud turns and fires high. Jared Stroud, another one of those guys that's really feeling himself this week after that two goal and an assist performance against Atlanta United. You know, this one, that's a pretty tough strike, as you can see on your on your on your screens here about 25 yards out. Get this gets this one completely wrong and sends it into the Bluff City Mafia going for the camera there. Stroud actually was on the doorstep of a hat trick in that contest against Atlanta and Marcus Epps took the penalty kick in his place. Well, that just goes to show the, the what kind of teammate Jared Stroud is, you know, to you know, he's not wearing the captain's armband tonight, but he usually does. And you know, he, he was sitting on a hat trick and allowed Marcus Epps to, to build that confidence up. So well done on, on Jared Stroud. Approaching 30 minutes elapsed in this one. One nil on the goal from Jordan Scarlett for New York Red Bulls too. There's a second ball in play out of your screen that they had to clear from the field. That's what Grandison was waiting on. Now Ewan will play it forward. See, it's going to be really hard for 901 FC lumping balls up forward for, for Brandon Allen, Elliott Collier. Jordan Scarlett and Sean Nealis both are just so good in the air and so athletic back there. I think it's going to take something else in order to beat them. So we have a turnover here from Cam Lindley. Chasing back Hauser Ramsey. A tackle attempt. May have knocked it just far enough offline to save a goal. Yeah, that's an excellent last ditch tackle from Jacob Hauser Ramsey. I believe he got his foot on that and kicked it off of Jorgensen. It's not the best turnover, not a good turnover from Cam Lindley as he, as you can saw it was 2v2 Cam Lindley versus Jorgensen and might have been Jared Stroud up top. Excellent challenge from Jacob Hauser Ramsey in the end. Looks like he got a piece of that ball. You sense the pressure from New York Red Bulls too. It's been consistent throughout the half. It seems like it's always in the offensive third. Is there anything 901 can do that you're not seeing or that you're seeing that they haven't done yet in order to sort of like release that pressure a little bit and play further up the field? Yeah, I think more movement, first of all. I know it's hot, but you, you have to move. You have to move yourself, first of all, the third man running and, and really get that ball moving to, to beat that initial pressure. Because once you beat that initial pressure, the, the, the field is wide open. You know, that's that's one of the you know negative aspects that that Red Bulls the game the Red Bulls two plays you know they press high but if you beat that pressure you know you can be in behind but they're so confident in their pressure that they'll win the ball that they'll take those chances. Here's Birch with a kick coming from the left wing. Evan Loro trying to set up his defense in the box. Forward Collier there. Grandison. Did you see how strong you and Grandison is? It's a one man band down there. Absolutely facing, you know, two and three Red Bulls players just using his strength to, to hold on to that ball and try to win something. You know, that it's a really good foul that he just drew there because if, if he loses that ball there, you know, New York Red Bulls too is off for the races. And now you've got the photo negative of the kick you just had. Birch going from the right side this time. Yeah, this one I think is in a little bit more dangerous of a position for Mark Birch to be able to whip in in between the PK spot and, and the six yard box. Let's see, Birch to the far post. Fantastic ball and a fantastic header once again from Jordan Scarlett. Campbell's gonna come way out. It's well done from Jeff Caldwell to step up and then 
continue to, to, to stay composed and, and pass that ball, that short ball to Cam Lindley. The aggression shown by Jeff Caldwell, first time back in there after a trio of starts made by Scott Levine. It's a tough ball again from Cam Lindley. And now Red Bulls with numbers. Yeah, this is what you don't want if you're not on FC, but I don't want to see has done well to, to get numbers back behind the ball. Stroud got to his right foot, couldn't bend it closely enough. See how dangerous Jared Stroud is cutting back, as you said, Tyler, back on his right foot, just whipping that ball across the six-yard box was, you know, can't, can't, couldn't really tell if he was trying to shoot or cross, and I don't know if he knew either, but he was just trying to create problems in that six-yard box for 901 FC. Fans follow Memphis 901 FC and the rest of the USL championship all season long on ESPN Plus. Home to the USL, MLS, UFC, and more. Join the over 2 million sports fans who have already discovered ESPN Plus and watch the championship live every week. Caldwell again showing the aggression. And that time, Robin Jorgensen. It's really good to see from Jeff Caldwell being aware, coming off of his line, quelling those through balls for New York Red Bulls, too. Well done from Kyle Duncan. He, he read that he was in some trouble there and it eventually just goes down after he feels the contact and, and earns himself a foul as he puts his finger in Dan Metzger's face. Dan Metzger letting him know that he thought that was a little bit soft. Metzger's not the guy you try. Absolutely not. This is also Dan Metzger's former club as well. So several guys on here with, with Dan Metzger and Brandon Allen that you know want to do well in this game and they and they you know, want to show their stuff against their former club. John Wolnick getting a word in advice. Absolutely, and John Wolnick, he'll know the fire of Dan Metzger. He was, he was, he was the coach there when Dan Metzger was there winning a, winning a USL championship. Tim Mulqueen in his first season at the helm for the Bluff City. Going without the suit this evening. And I don't blame him. Might change the luck, you never know. It might change the luck and, you know, for his for his own health and safety, you oh, know, goodness, it's pretty yeah. warm out there. Although he's a cool customer. I never really saw him sweat too much on the sideline. 88 degrees at first kick here in Memphis, about three blocks east of the Mississippi River. Actually, and you can see the, the sweat accumulating on the 901 FC players jerseys and New York Red Bulls, too, for that matter. I imagine there'll be a, a, a few kit changes at halftime for both teams. Worth chasing, but had too far to go. Still, it's good pressure from Morgan Hackworth once again, forcing Evan Leroy to kick this ball out of bounds. Hackworth here. Really showing off the quick twitch. Absolutely. You know, he, he took a, a, a bit of a mistouch there, but corrected it by just putting his head down and chasing that ball and forcing, I believe that was, Jordan Scarlett to kick that ball out of bounds. Here's Stroud looking to turn. Luba dispossessed. It's well done from Ewan Granson coming all the way over from right back to, to win that ball for 901 FC. Again, down there toward Hackworth. You can see Hackworth, he's just sprinting after the ball. You know, he might not win the first one, but you best believe that he's going to sprint after that second ball and, and at least, at the very least, put pressure on that New York Red Bulls two back line. Toward the edge of the six yard box. Birch. Metzger. Just good ball from Birch. You can see the pressure from New York Red Bulls two. Four or five guys around one player. It's thick in there. Forcing the, the, the mistake from, I believe that was Dan Metzger. So you can see the pressure. They, they bring a lot, of, like a lot of guys to the ball, New York Red Bulls, too. And if you can break that initial pressure, you know, if you have five guys around one ball, there's going to be two or three guys open. So, you know, as you said before, Tyler, with, with that pressure, you know, comes, there's always going to be an open man. So it, a lot of times it's very hard to, to find the open man when you have five and six guys around you. But, you know, there's got to be a way to do that, to be able to spread the field. 
Alongside J.J. Greer, I'm Tyler Springs. Memphis 901 FC down 1 0 here in the 38th minute. New York Red Bulls 2 after a goal from Jordan Scarlett. Hauser Ramsey not going to let that slide. It's well read from Hauser Ramsey. A little bit too much space from Chris Limba, though. If you give him that much space around the 18 yard box, he's eventually going to. Absolutely, he's eventually going to find the open man. Grandison. Once again, you see that pressure. Five guys around you and Grandison forcing him into the turnover. And well, a nice read by Birch. Really well done for Mark Birch. But once again, Red Bulls 2 wins it right back. It's like putting up a fishing net. Yeah, there's there's so many of them, and they're, and they're incredibly fit players. You know, as you said, Tyler, 88 degrees, he, degrees here in Memphis and extremely humid, and, and yet these Red Bulls 2 players still just sprinting after the ball, and it, and it just goes to show the, the Red Bulls methodology. You know, it's, it's very tough to play in their side. You know, it requires an, an incredibly tough work rate and workload, but, you know, if, if you're going to be a Red Bulls player, you, you have to be committed to, to what they do. Lindley forward for Hackworth. Morgan Hackworth at the top of the box. Can't get free. Well done. Good ball from Cam Lindley and, and good energy again from Morgan Hackworth, but dwelt on the ball a little bit too long. He's got to make a, a little bit quicker of a decision, but that's better from 901 FC. Duncan the other way will feed Jeff Caldwell. Hackworth and Duncan, in like two cocktail straws, swirling in a drink tonight. They're just Absolutely. moving constantly. Absolutely. You can see on the replay here, Morgan Hackworth. Dwells on a little bit long. It's good defensive work from Chris Lemma. I'd like to see Morgan Hackworth maybe just t take a shot there. You never know what can happen. It could take a deflection and, and who knows, but still good work rate from, from Morgan Hackworth. 901 is a difficult time getting the ball with any solid looks inside the 18 tonight. And I think it's going to come as Dan Metzger steals that ball. I think it's going to come from a turnover, come from a mistake from New York Red Bulls too in order to get the ball in good positions, but that also requires work rate and, and pressure from 901 FC. You might have had one there had Brandon Allen not gone to the ground, but could not keep his footing getting tangled up there with Scarlett. So it's going to be tough for Brandon Allen tonight going against Jordan Scarlett and Sean Neal as two very physical players. Coming up at halftime, Wes Sharpie goes walking on Beal. You can find out a little bit more about the former South Florida Bull. We'll have a look around the league for you as well as some stats from the first half. New York Red Bulls with a little more possession and more pressure applied in the first 45 than Memphis 901 FC. But here's Elliot Collier in a long run. Collier one on one. Can he turn? It's a good battle there between Elliot Collier and Jordan Scarlett. You can see what Elliot was trying to do there. Might have tried to nutmeg Jordan Scarlett, but he was up to that task and it ended up being really good defending. You have the counterattack here with Stroud Jared Stroud. Against Grandison. It's well done from you and Grandison standing up Jared Stroud. Fs. Squares up, but launches way wide. It's a good move from Marcus Epps. Had Jacob Hauser-Ramsey on his back and elected to cut inside and found himself open, but the ball might have taken a little bit of a bobble there, and he's leaning back a little bit too much and, and sails this one over Jeff Caldwell's goal. See Marcus Epps wearing the armband tonight. I think it's well-deserved. He's put in a shift for New York Red Bulls, too this season and as you said earlier Tyler was able to get that penalty kick goal last week. Not that at that time it was the most meaningful goal and about a six to one drubbing at that point in the match but it's a goal nonetheless you got to convert your chances where you get them. Goal nonetheless confidence booster and you know and John Wolniak has entrusted him to wear the armband tonight on the road so well done for Marcus Epps. Allen. What a ball. Allen oh. a chance. Duncan ran up on him. It's a fantastic ball in there, but I believe it was less than Paul and Brandon Allen found himself all alone. Might have thought he was offside. You know, he was shocked to find himself that wide open and unfortunately took took a little bit too long in the ball and it was good defending from Sean Nealis. Stroud trying to get going with the counter. Epps from the top. Caldwell, a great save. It's a good save from Jeff Caldwell, a save that he should make and that, that he'll make 99 times out of 100, but 
it's a little bit alarming that Marcus Epps can have that much space right on top of the 18 yard box. But fortunately for Jeff Caldwell, Marcus Epps hits this one right at him. Some of that coming from the counterattack. I think definitely a lot of that was coming from the counterattack and that's what Red Bulls can do. They can hit you on the counter fast. So, you know, if there is going to be a turnover or if there's a shot on goal and Evan Luro picks it up, you know, you have to be aware of that counterattack. Closing in on halftime here in Memphis. Brandon Allen with the most recent opportunity, even though he couldn't get a clear shot on goal. You can see the work rate is there for 901 FC, but they just haven't really been able to connect offensively and have that sharpness in the final attacking third. So I think, you know, that's something to hit on, you know, for Tim Mulqueen and his side is if they can get a little bit more quality in the final third, they'll be in business. Duncan feeds across. Oh. This is wow. trouble. Stroud can't put it through. Oh. It's finally oh. finished. New York Red Bulls to their second of the match. And just before halftime, a disaster for Memphis. It's a great ball served in from the New York Red Bulls to winger and Jared Stroud looked like he was he almost got this one all wrong as it got caught under his feet but ends up landing right at the feet. It's a great ball from Kyle Duncan served across the six yard box and Jared Stroud almost was unable to put that ball in but it lands right at Vincent Bezicourt's feet. You know good. Well done. He was at the right time in the right place and it's a well deserved goal for New York Red Bulls too. You thought for a moment when this goes off the iron that maybe Memphis has got a little bit of luck on its side, but played right to Bezicourt. And that's the second week in a row, in a row Tyler, that 901 FC has conceded just before halftime. And those are never goals that, that, that you want to concede. And it's, it's going to be tough, a, a really, it's going to be even tougher now for 901 FC in the second half. On the season, 901 is now minus seven in the final 15 minutes of the first half. It's good ball movement there between Morgan Hackworth and Leston Paul and Leston Paul driving forward, earning a foul at the corner of the 18 yard box. What can you get here? Lindley, the one with the setup. You've mentioned it before when we've talked about it. He's got a strong boot for scoring, not just for playmaking. Absolutely, and I expect this in swinger here from Cam Lindley is going to be, you know, driving this ball towards the back post just to create havoc. And even if somebody doesn't touch the ball in the box, you know, maybe it can land in that back post. All eyes on Cam Lindley. Too strong. Yeah, a little bit strong there from Cam Lindley. Would have liked to have seen that ball in play. He doesn't do that very often. You see the frustration on Brandon Allen's face of him not getting the ball and facing his former club and New York Red Bulls to really taking it to Memphis 901 FC right now. Still a ways to go in this one. Exactly, exactly right, Tyler. And the last thing you want to see is for the 901 FC players to drop their head and start feeling sorry for themselves because I can guarantee you that Red Bulls too will not be feeling sorry for them. If they didn't let up last week against Atlanta in an 8-1 game, they're not going to let up here. Especially not since they only beat them by a goal last time these two teams met in March. There's a court back to Duncan. And now they call the half. Memphis 901 FC trailing 2 0 New York Red Bulls 2 after 45 minutes of play here on Saturday evening. Tim Queen and the Mid Southerners with a lot to talk about going into the break. We'll take one as well. You're watching USL Championship Soccer here in AutoZone Park in Memphis, Tennessee. When I will call, I will. I will
At halftime, New York Red Bulls 2 has the jump on Memphis 901 FC 2-0. Wes Sharpie went walking on Beal earlier this week. Learn a little bit more about Wes right here. Guys, Dustin Starr here alongside 901 FC star Wes Sharpie. How do you like Memphis so far? I love it. I mean, every time I go out in the city, you meet some people who are very friendly, uh, very accepting, and yeah, I'm loving it so far. Well, you're walking down world famous Beale Street. I'm sure you frequented here quite a bit. Quite a bit, yeah. Had a little every, fun? We had a little fun, you know. Uh, a couple times went out with the guys and uh, it's a good time, you know. I don't want to go too in depth with it, but <laughs> it's it's a fun place, man, and it's it's a lot, lot going on, you know, a lot of culture around here, which is awesome. So we're really enjoying it. Okay, so you're playing here in Memphis, and you're already receiving recognition for your hard work and your play. Tell us about that. That's got to mean a lot to you. It, it means a lot. Um, it's, it's important when the team does well, because then you know, team success brings individual success. And I'm very happy that I got recognized. Um, Hopefully get some more, you know, it's still somewhat early in the season, so looking to keep that going. Cool. Well, we want to get to know you. So you're on your day off today. Yep. On a typical day off, what would you do in Memphis? What's your favorite thing to do? I know it's, it's hard. hard. It's hard. You got barbecue. You got cool coffee shops, which I love. But I got to say golf. Golf? I love golf. I know. It might be, everyone might be, ah, golf is boring, but I, I love <laughs> golf. How good are you? I'm not great. I just, I just like it. So is that over 100? Is it under 100? Under 100. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, under 100. And you mentioned barbecue. We can't let you go without asking what your favorite barbecue in all of Memphis. I know that's a tough one, too. But what yeah. have you tried? What do you like? Uh, I'm going to say my favorite barbecue. I haven't tried Rendezvous. I heard a lot of good things. Ooh, we got to try that. I was talking to you before about Tops. Yes. I've, I've only had Central. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's, I should have more, but uh, I love Central. It was so good. I've been there about five times already, you know, and oh, wow. so i got to say Central Barbecue. <laughs> well, Wes, it was nice talking yeah, to you. Nice talking to you Thanks as well. Thanks for catching up, Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Wes Sharpie from the 901 FC right here on Beale Street. Curls it inside the 18. Soccer attempt and a beautiful strike on the bicycle for Lansing Ignite FC. Absolutely incredible. Elma N4. Are you kidding me? Going long distance, trying to connect. Sayone, and he puts it in the back of the net from long distance. Sending it forward. Here's another opportunity. And boy, you back of the net. That is what they've been looking to do all night long. 91st minute, we are tied at one apiece. Here's Mintz again. Mintz gets across to the top of the D. Moshomani left foot. Beautiful strike to be Moshomani. Here comes North Texas on the attack. The strike and a goal.
Memphis 901 FC's next home match comes up against Ottawa Fury FC Saturday, July the 27th at 7.30 here at AutoZone Park. Tickets available now. Call 901-721-6000. We'd like to thank our official pub partners as well. Aldo's Pizza Pies, Silky Sullivan's, Crosstown Brewing Company, High Cotton Brewing Company, The Brass Door, Celtic Crossing, Medelson Brewing Company as well. You can watch every Memphis 901 FC home match and away matches at these locations, including Memphis 901 FC's next road match. That's against the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, Saturday, August the 3rd at 6 p.m. Back at AutoZone Park, where Memphis 901 FC trailing 2-0 against New York Red Bulls 2 in their second meeting this season. Alongside J.J. Greer, I'm Tyler Springs. Been a tough one in this first half. J.J. certainly hopeful that Memphis can turn things around in the second half. Yeah, I think Memphis 901 FC has really struggled with that New York Red Bulls 2 pressure that they're, you know, known around the league for in, in USL Championship, also in MLS, which is, you know, where they get their methodology from. And, you know, it's it's, it's been tough for 901 FC, and that was a, a really tough way to end the half. But I think in the second half, if they can get more control of the ball and, and break that pressure, they'll do they'll do much better. As we take a look around the league this evening, Memphis 901 FC, not the only team in action that you ought to be paying attention to. Pittsburgh, who we just mentioned, taking on North Carolina tonight. Riverhounds unbeaten at Highmark Stadium this year. And North Carolina coming off a 3-0 win, 3-0 win against Loudoun United back on the 17th of July with a brace from Yamakani Chester as well. Tampa Bay and St. Louis also squaring off this weekend. The Rowdies have won three of their last four. St. Louis has not won in league play since April. Long time to go for the drought between St. Louis, or rather the drought for St. Louis. Memphis coming up next. Ottawa Fury, another top seven team. Those sides drew nil-nil back on June the 15th. And as we mentioned, Ottawa, one of the top teams in this league, joining the likes of Nashville and New York Red Bulls too. As for our stats in this match, JJ, what stands out to you from this first half of action? Well, in this case, you know, as you can see what the numbers say, and in this, in this game, the numbers are not lying. Memphis 901 FC basically being outplayed in every single category. You see goals is the most important at 2-0, but you see the shots, Tyler, at 11-1. to Not something you want to see if you're 901 FC, and also that possession number really stands up, almost a 60-40 possession number in favor of New York Red Bulls, too. So if you're 901 FC and Tim Mulqueen, I think you got to really lift up your work rate and, and maybe have a few guys coming off the bench. We'll take a break and come back to AutoZone Park next. Hopefully good things in score for Memphis. The second half coming your way in a little bit here on USL Championship Soccer, live from Memphis, Tennessee.
the Mid-South nightscape all lit up here on Saturday as New York Red Bulls, too, has lit up Memphis for a pair of goals in this first half. Fans trying to stay relaxed, trying to keep believing in this Memphis 901 FC side. Our halftime highlights showing you clips from the first half. J.J. Greer, Memphis with a couple of chances like off the corner here, but couldn't put together. It's a fantastic ball served in from Cam Lindley. Unfortunately, Brandon Allen not able to finish that chance. And New York Red Bulls, too, has put plenty of pressure on Jeff Caldwell on the Memphis defense. Yeah, last-ditch tackle for Mark Birch. A lot of, of last-ditch efforts from Memphis in that first half. You see here another headed chance inside the box. And Caldwell, again, playing the athletic man, going to his right there, but eventually, New York Red Bulls, too, would come through. Yes. Elliot Collier with a nice header there. And finally, Jordan Scarlett making the difference. Yeah, it was a fantastic ball from Chris Lima, whipped into that back post. Jordan Scarlett all alone was one of probably one of the easiest goals that he'll score of his career. That made it 1-0 early on. And then again, a little doing from Jared Stroud, finished by Vincent Bezicourt. Yeah, one of the easiest finishes for Vincent Bezicourt, but give credit to him. He, he made himself available and was at the right place at the right time. Tough breaks for Memphis in that first half. You mentioned the shot disparity. You'd like to see the 901 get a little more into the offensive area. It looks like there will be an offensive minded substitute coming from head coach Tim Mulqueen. This looks like Lagos Kunga. Yeah, I think that's a good substitution from head coach Tim Mulqueen. Morgan Hackworth will be coming off and Lagos Kunga coming on. It was a good work rate from Morgan Hackworth, but I think you're gonna need you're gonna find a little bit more quality in that final attacking third, a little bit more dynam dynamism in Lagos Kunga, and, and that's exactly what you need in this game. You need another offensive threat to try to break through for 901 FC. Last time you saw Kunga on a Saturday night here in Memphis, he put home the fourth goal in Memphis win over Hartford Athletic a couple of weeks back. A great strike with a left foot that finished off a thrilling evening for 901. Their first home win in USL championship play. Can Memphis 901 FC turn things around here on New York Red Bulls 2? We're about to find out. So there's going to be up to be a lot better sharper passing in the in the final third and in the midfield for, for 901 FC and, and break that initial pressure from Red Bulls too. Nealis will send it forward and out to give Memphis their first opportunity here. So Kunga taking the place of Hackworth. Kunga brings a little more size in addition to an awesome haircut. <laughs> Speed as well, you know he's He's got that magic. Well, he's got a little bit of that of that magic that you want with that left foot and, and speed and quickness. So, 901 FC will definitely be relying on Lagos Kunga to, to to bring a little bit bring a little bit of pace into this game. Kunga number 11 in the orange boots there. The navy blue kits for 901 FC. New York Red Bulls in red. What's become dark red as sweat has worn down the colors over the evening. Just underwear here in the second half alongside J.J. Greer. I'm Tyler Springs. Pleasure to be with you on ESPN Plus and CW30. Memphis with the throw. Trying to find Brandon Allen sandwiched between a pair of defenders, Duncan and Nealis. Red Bulls, too, know that Brandon Allen is the talisman. He's he's going to be the focal point of this 901 FC attack, and they've done their scout, and, and, and they're used to him fully. John Wolniak is fully aware of what Brandon Allen can provide, so you can see right there two Red Bulls players surrounding Brandon Allen, not letting him get a sniff. What I like is Kunga giving him a little bit of help there in the corner so that Allen's not so isolated. And that's what Kunga will do. He'll bring a little bit, a little bit of energy. As you can see him leaping in the air. Good leap for, for not a very tall player, but that's exactly what Tim Mulqueen has instructed him to do at halftime, I can imagine, is just to bring energy into this game. Metzger trying to cross in. Collier, Kunga. Evaded one. Lagos Kunga plays it in just a little bit high that time. Metzger trying to keep it on. It's a fantastic ball from Lagos Kunga. It took a few touches to get around Kyle Duncan and whipping a really good ball, unfortunately, just over the head of Leston Paul. Memphis with the first chance in the second half. Unfortunately, not able to get quite in the face of Evan Loro, the goalkeeper for. New York Red Bulls, too, the way they wanted to. But there's a long way to go. Long way to go is right, Tyler. And I think if you can continue to push forward, as Lesson Paul is doing here, and not allow New York Red Bulls, too, to, to get an early goal here in the second half, you'll have a chance moving forward. Kunga playing to the middle. Look at that. Oh! 
Brandon Allen, his first goal for Memphis 901 FC. They've had the deficit here at third in Union. Exactly what you want to see from Tim Mo Queens 901 FC side. Super sub, Logos Kunga, what a substitution coming in, bringing energy. Serves a fantastic ball across the 18 yard, yard box. And this is a great run as well. As you can see, Logos Kunga driving forward on that left hand side, blowing past Kyle Duncan. Serving in a great ball into the six yard box and Brandon Allen making that near post run. That's what you want from your striker. Easy tap in from Brandon Allen. Good to see him finally get on the score sheet against his former squad, New York Red Bulls too. And this one not called back greatly for Brandon Allen. 901 FC and the Bluff City Mafia right back in this thing. It's exactly what you want if you're 901 FC. And a whole half still to go to try and get even. Jeff Caldwell getting his first touch in the second half after flipping sides. Yeah, it's a fantastic start from Memphis 901 FC. Lagos Kunga has been a, a game changer so far in the first three or four minutes of this game. It's been a super substitution. wide Luba looking for Stroud Ewan Granderson on the denial it's a clean play there from Ewan Granderson you can just see the strength he just shrugs off Jared Stroud Jared Stroud looks like he took a little bit of a knock there but you can see the strength once again from Ewan Granderson Birch uh oh wow it's a called well in the nick of time it's a tough ball for Mark Birch you can see a little bit of a rust from Mark Birch. He had to, he's had to sit out for a couple weeks, so a little bit of rust from him. But Lagos Kunga once again bringing energy. Kunga's fresh, tied up by five guys there. Yeah, a little bit too much from Lagos Kunga. He had Elliot Collier on the on the far side of the field over there, but you can see at least that he's 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 extremely hungry in this game. Stroud, one v one with Grandison, and Grandison. Bowling his way up to the touch line. You see the physicality of Ewan Grandison going up against one of the best in the USL Championship and Jared Stroud not giving him any space at all and, and showing his strength and physicality. You see Daniel Gutierrez pointing at the spots, all the spots where Dan Metzger is had infraction and, 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 and telling him no more. He'll probably his next foul will probably be a yellow card. The Ryan Act red to Metzger. Gives a chance to Scarlet. Luba from out wide. All the way across. It's good movement from New York Red Bulls to the ball. A little bit long from Luba, but Sean Neal is the center back. 1v1 over against West Sharpie. It's good defending from West Sharpie, not allowing that cross to be served in from Sean Nealis. So now a throw coming from Duncan. Duncan. The top of the 18. It's a really clever ball there from Chris Lima served into Vincent Bezicourt on top of the 18 yard box, but calm defending from Ewan Grandison. Unfortunately, unable to connect with Brandon Allen. You can see what Grandison was trying to do there. Could not make the connection. It's good work rate from Elliot Collier forcing Luro into the ball into Ewan Grandison, but Red Bulls 2 once again earning back possession quickly. Poked away there. The break momentum for New York Red Bulls too. It's a really good start so far from 901 FC, really taking it to the Red Bulls and getting possession in the Red Bulls defensive third. So Tim McQueen, as you can imagine, might have read 901 FC the riot act and inserted Lagos Kunga into this game, and, it, and it's come to be a re revelation so far. Why are you 
whatever seasoning Tim Queen added at halftime, it has definitely whipped these guys into a little bit of a frenzy, and maybe it's just Kunga coming in. They'll take it so far. If you're just joining us, Brandon Allen with the goal moments out of halftime is first for 901 FC. It's cut the deficit in half. And Tyler, I don't think Brandon Allen is done in this game. I think if 901 FC can continue to feed Brandon Allen in the right spots, I think he's got more goals left in him. Paul. A little too far forward there for Allen. Yeah, that's a tough ball from Leslie Paul. Brandon Allen's not exactly the type of player that's going to be sprinting in behind. He likes to get the ball in and around the 18 and 6 yard box. I think if you're if you're looking for Lagos Kunga in this space, that's the right move. Kunga. Working hard and now told to work less hard. It's good pressure from Lagos Kunga though. If you are going to foul, that's the, that's the right place to do it. Lemma. Taken away by Lindley. It's good pressure from 901 FC, but it they're still struggling a little bit in those tighter spaces with those tighter passes. Lama left it for Stroud. Close. Mm. But the chance goes begging for Jorgensen. 901 FC extremely fortunate that this is not a 3-1 game right now as Jacob Hauser Ramsey was in the correct spot to, to be able to clear that ball out of bounds, but it's squirted somehow through his legs and landed at the feet of Jorgensen. But Jorgensen places this ball wide. Really fortunate for, for Jeff Caldwell, 901 FC. Well to the middle. The massive bodies with Kunga the one to control. Once again, really good work from Lagos Kunga holding that ball up. Collier trying to keep it in. He does, but Duncan's right there. Great pressure from Elliot Collier and right in front of the 901 FC fans, and they're letting them know that they appreciate his hard work. Shari and Lindley. Now Grandison. Allen edging toward the top of the 18. Really good ball from you and Grandison into Dan Metzger. Metzger looking for Allen again. Oh. The header there, but an aggressive move from Loro out of goal. It's another near post run from Brandon Allen. He really likes that near post, and he's causing a lot of problems for the New York Red Bulls two back line. The Memphians in the stands on the edges of their seats. Absolutely, I think you're seeing a new, a brand new Memphis 901 FC side in the second half, Tyler. This is nothing like we saw in the first half. It's been the control, as you mentioned, completely on Memphis' side. They've taken it to New York Red Bulls, too, for whatever reason, irrespective of why it wasn't there in the first half. You've got to be pleased with the way people have responded coming out of the break. They came out extremely hard, and I think that early goal really lifted their spirits and, and completely changed up this game. And you'd like to see it, you know, we're in the first 10 minutes of the second half. You'd like to see this last. Here's Metzger's last attempt, trying to feed it there for Allen, and Loro almost smoked him in the head. Yeah, it's a great, it's a brave run from Brandon Allen, putting his body on the line to get another goal. One knew this stretch was going to be tough. Three straight matches, all at home, but all against top seven teams. Collier working in from the flank, dispossessed. It's great hold up play by Elliot Collier. There's a lot of contact there, but Daniel Gutierrez likes to hold on as Lindley. Kunga can't get a touch. It's well defended from New York Red Bulls, too. They had about five guys surrounding Lagos Kunga, not allowing him to get that strike off. But once again, really good attack and play from 901 FC. You see Elliot Collier, Collier and Lagos Kunga and Brandon Allen really causing a lot of a lot of pressure on New York Red Bulls too. Loro to set up. Memphis 901 FC winless against a halftime deficit this season. Trailed 2-0 at the break. Have gotten one goal since. All with a knockdown. 
he and Lemma eye to eye disagree. Bit of contact there from Leslie Paul and Chris Lemma. Now Epps. Epps turn and fire, and Caldwell's right there ready for it. Decent save from Jeff Caldwell. Definitely a save that he should make. Marcus Epps found himself in a lot of space there, and he's really good at whipping that ball into the back post. So something to watch out for 9-1 FC. You don't want to get sloppy and start to give these dangerous players like Marcus Epps and Jared uh, Stroud any space. Duncan. Now Coffee. Decent pressure from Lagos Kunga, but if he's gonna be pressuring the keepers, he needs the, non his, the rest of his teammates to, to join him so that that pressure isn't easily broken. Stroud wants to put it together with Luba. Luba's strike well off the mark. Giannis Luba found himself in a lot of space at the top of the 18 yard box, but as only a left back would, he sends this bar, this ball way over the bar. See on the replay here, Marcus Epps with good technique, but can't quite bend this one into the back post and ends up being an easy save for Jeff Caldwell. Get updates and alerts all year long by following your club on ESPN.com. Search for Memphis 901 FC and then click the follow button. To keep up with the latest news and scores. Plus get reminders on Memphis 901 FC's next match. Go to ESPN.com now and click follow for Memphis 901 FC. 2-1 the lead for New York Red Bulls, too, as they gain possession of the offensive third. Played toward Jorgensen up until Wes Sharpie had something to say about it. Kunga wanting to counter. You see how hungry Lagos Kunga is. He's, he's got that bravery and he's got that youth to take on two and three players at a time. So it's good to see Lagos Kunga active in this game. Kunga, the assist on Brandon Allen's goal earlier in the half. Here's the, here he is again, knocked off the ball. Memphis will keep it. Lindley to the top of the box for Allen, couldn't get the volley right. Couldn't get it wide, and, and, it, and it looked like it. he was offside anyway, so it wouldn't have counted even if he was able to get his foot on that ball. I haven't seen a lot of instances with the flag up tonight. But Allen a bit too far forward there. See, Marcus Epps has a lot of space in there to be, be able to pick out players like Chris Lemma, who also has space. Lemma to the center. Good deflection there. You see your two strikers, Brandon Allen and Elliot Collier, even with their own 18-yard box. Really good effort and work rate by, by your strikers. Good to have big bodies in there. That time, Luba, perhaps a little bit of a mistouch. And that's the effort it's going to take, Tyler. You're going to need all hands on deck at times to be able to keep your Red Bulls 2 off the score sheet because, as we said before, they can, they can score goals quickly and in bunches. Just over an hour in, Memphis 901 FC still very much in the game. It's a great ball from Jean Coffey. Jorgensen. Finally tracked down by Birch. Really good searching ball from John Coffey out of the midfield into Jorgensen's path, but well done from Jacob Hauser, Hauser Ramsey and Mark Birch to be able to defend this ball. And now a dangerous corner. We saw a flurry of corners in the first half from New York Red Bulls too. Part of the pressure that eventually lead that eventually led to their offensive success. So Lemma now from the corner. Of an outswinger off of Chris Lima's left foot. He actually elects to go short. Luba in. It's well defended again from Jacob Hauser Ramsey. He's a physical presence back there at 6 3. Duncan with green grass. And again, Hauser Ramsey. Hauser Ramsey will eat those up all day. What about now? 
too strong from Stroud. And 901 FC weathers the storm. It's a good idea from Stroud looking for Vincent Bezicourt on that back post. You saw in the first half that Red Bulls 2 had some success with whipping balls into the back post, but a little bit long and, and out of the path of Vincent Bezicourt's outstretched foot. You look at where New York Red Bulls were this time last week. Up 6-1 against an Atlanta team that looks similar to Memphis in their lack of scoring and lack of overall success this year. Memphis has got to be feeling a bit better about themselves. Epps. I think they'll be feeling much better about themselves than, than Atlanta United is feeling, and they need to continue to keep up with keep up with this work rate that they're that they're producing right now. And it's going to take that much more effort if they want to be able to tie this game and, and then potentially go on and win it and get three points at home. Now wide for Epps. Marcus Epps played in, and again Hauser Ramsey right there, the headed clear. It's a fantastic touch from Lubin. You can see the quality of the balls that Red Bulls two are whipping into the box. You got to think if you're not on FC, you don't want to allow too many of those or eventually Red Bulls 2 will find the back of the net with talented guys like Jared Stroud, as you can see there, and, and, and Marcus Epps and Matthias Jorgensen. Dead right. That's how so many of the goals against Atlanta look for New York Red Bulls 2. In their most recent match, an 8-1 pounding. And I think what you're seeing right now is some of that high press, high energy that 901 FC started the second half it's starting to wear off a little bit. They might be getting a little bit fatigued it right now. Takes a toll, right? Absolutely. So you know, you want to, you want to, if you need to sit back a little bit and, and get your second win, that's fine. But you don't want to be absorbing too much pressure and allowing Red Bulls to win your box and having bad turnovers, or else this game will be 3-1 and, and you'll have that much higher of a mountain to climb. Luba, forward for Stroud. It's definitely a foul from Jacob Hauser Ramsey right there. He was in a good position. I thought he got a little bit impatient right there and, and fouled Jared Stroud. Jared Stroud was not in a dangerous position. He's basically close to the corner flag and he's not facing, he's facing his own goal. So a little bit impatient from Jacob Hauser Ramsey, the rookie, on that particular play. Caldwell playing the crossing guard. See some of the Red Bulls two players getting some water on the sideline over there over this dead ball. To be whipped in from Jared Stroud into that back post. It's a fantastic ball. Jacob Hauser Ramsey gets just enough of a touch on it to send it out of bounds for a Red Bulls two corner kick. See on the replay here, it's a lovely ball from Jared Stroud whipped into the back post. Jacob Hauser Ramsey has to elevate it still. Almost found the head of Sean Nealis at that back post. But we'll do this again on the other side. Nobody more important for the Memphis defense in the last five minutes than Hauser Ramsey and his leaping ability. Absolutely. He made up for that questionable foul that, that he committed on the near side of the field. Played well wide. Metzger there. It's lovely. Calm defending from Dan Metzger to be able to take that touchdown and, and play you in Grandison. Numbers for 901 FC briefly. They can't keep it ahead. Yeah, you have to think if that would have found Elliot Collier, 901 FC would have been off to the races. Back the other way. Paul disagrees. Paul getting the nod tonight over Adam Najem in the midfield. I think Lesson Paul has had a really good performance tonight. He's been physical, he's committed fouls. Um, professional fouls where, he, where he's needed to do. As we see, Najem looks like he's about to, to, to come check in, but Lesson Paul has put in a, in a shift tonight for 901 FC, and I, and I think he's done really well stepping in for Adam Najem. Speaking of, the former Beth Steele player and sometime Afghan national team caller, Adam Najem set to come on here. He will take out Leston Paul. It's well done from Leston Paul. I thought he put in a shift tonight. Fortunately, leaves this. Unfortunately for 901 FC, he leaves this game at 2-1. But I think he's done a good job, and I think this is a really good substitution from Tim Mulqueen. Adam Najem probably brings a little bit more attacking flair 
to 901 FC, and that's what you're going to need if you, if you want to get a goal or maybe two goals to try to earn three points in front of your home crowd. Those two guys were talking between themselves at practice on Friday, trying to go over what needed to be done from their position. Very much in sync, one knowing what the other needs and what the other's trying to do. So Najem, I think, a particularly fine replacement in this circumstance to try and give you maybe a little more of the energy that you saw from Paul back in the early part of that first half. Absolutely, you need energy in this game. As you can see from Lagos Kunga making the 50-yard sprint, showing off his speed. A, this is a tricky game, Tyler, because you know you need offense, but at the same time, you, you need a little bit of defensive awareness. As you can see Red Bulls, too. Luba in the middle. Duncan. Memphis defending at the top of the 18. And a player down at the top of the 18 is going to draw some boos from the Bluff City Mafia, no doubt. It's another really late call from our head official, Daniel Gutierrez. And this is a yellow. See Kyle Duncan grabbing his ankle. He's down and in a lot of pain right now, calling for the athletic trainer. So this is a yellow on Kunga, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yellow on Kunga. He says my bad, so like he thinks it was uh, it was well deserving. He might have caught Kyle Duncan a little bit late. As you can see on the replay here, sticks out his foot, catches him a little bit late late on that ankle. That hurts a lot if you're Kyle Duncan. You can see why he's in pain. It was there was no malice in the tackle. He was just a Lucas Kuhn was just a little bit late in the challenge and, and caught a lot of Kyle Duncan's ankle. Kunga with the yellow. Tim Mulqueen and Memphis 901 FC will have to stomach that. It does give a chance for an impromptu hydration break. And Tyler, when we come back from this hydration break, this will be a dangerous free kick for Red Bulls 2. Looks like they'll be about 10 yards outside of the 18-yard box, and they'll have options to, to either potentially shoot or definitely whip the ball into the back post for a cross. Cameron Lindley, I think, picking up a yellow there as well. Based on, on sportsmanlike conduct. Big moment in this match, particularly if you're Memphis trying not to allow the lead to stretch out any further. You see Jeff Caldwell setting up his four-man wall. It's a good size wall, as you can see Vincent Bezicourt on his left foot. Near post, too high. Yeah, Bezicourt elected to go for the shot, tried to get that up and over the wall. And as you said, Tyler sails over the bar. And Memphis, for the moment, can exhale. Still work to be done. Just under 20 minutes still remaining, plus some extra time. And given that first half, Tyler, I think you got to be pleased with the position that you're in in the second half. It, only 2-1 down right now, and you, you've seen, you've definitely seen the better of the action in the second half, and you, you give yourself a chance to at least earn a point and, and potentially go for three points against a very tough, talented New York Red Bulls two side. It's a lovely ball from Cam Lindley. West Sharpie. Sharpie with a lot of space. Kunga. Mm. Little strong. Yeah, a little bit strong and 901 FC didn't quite have their run sorted out in the box. You saw it was a, a little bit stagnant, and you would have liked to see Brandon Allen recycle his run and, and either go back post or near post and, and have a little bit more people inside the, the, the six-yard box to give Lagos Kunga a few more options. But also with that being said, Taylor, Lagos Kunga has to get the ball. He has to get that service into the box. Kunga has breathed life into the Memphis offense in the second half. It's lovely skill from Cam Lindley finding Elliot Collier. Collier between four men. Elliot Collier knocked down in the box. There will not be a call there. Push clear to Allen. Brandon Allen oh. with the deflection just over. It's a fantastic find again from Cam Lindley finding Brandon Allen on his left foot. Allen puts his shot on target. As you can see Cam on your replay here, Cam Lindley finds. Brandon Allen at, at, at the edge of the box, puts the shot on target. It's a fantastic tackle from Kyle Duncan. Kyle Duncan gets his foot on the ball and forces it just over the bar, right in front of the Bluff City Mafia. They thought that might have been in, in the goal. Same man who just went down with the bum ankle, not afraid to give up the body. 
Here's Lindley. Bends it far post. Nobody there. Birch. Hauser Ramsey. Kunga. Mm. To the middle. And a corner coming because Loro unable to contain it. Really good offensive sequence from 901 FC. As you can see on the replay here, Evan Loro not, not able to hold on this ball, but I think it was already out of bounds as our assistant official indicated on the, on the far touch line. So a mulligan for Cam Lindley. Hauser Ramsey there with the head, but some traffic. Really good battle between Hauser Ramsey and, and Jordan Scarlett, two really strong players. Najem. Somebody's got to help him. It's really good defensive, good, good defense from Red Bulls too. Good patience from Kyle Duncan and Marcus Epps. Just mm. high from Sharpie. Well, Sharpie found himself in a really good position, and it was a really good whipped in ball on the far side of the field. As you see a couple players down as his heat looks to be getting to some of the players. It's Cam Lilly on his left foot this time, whips in an absolute dime into West Sharpie. Unfortunately for 901 FC, West Sharpie not typically used to being in positions like that and, and sails that header over the bar. And you wonder whether or not if there's no cramping right there for Hauser Ramsey, he's the one there instead of Sharpie. He's been most useful with his head this evening. Subs on coming. For the Red Bulls, Kyle Duncan's going to take a seat. Reese Buckmaster taking his place. That will not be the only change for John Woolnick. Here in the 75th minute. Fans, the USL unveiled its elite youth program and platform, USL Academy. This allows clubs at all levels across the USL to develop its local youth talent and compete at the highest level across the United States, including the USL Academy Cup. For more information, visit uslsoccer.com forward slash academy. 2-1, New York Red Bulls 2 on top of Memphis 901 FC. Brandon Allen's goal in the opening moments of the second half. That's cut the deficit in two. Jacob Hauser Ramsey has departed the field. Josh Morton taking his place late here for Memphis. Here's Elliot Collier with the ball at his feet to Adam Najem. Will feed. Allen was lining up for the bicycle there. Couldn't quite wheel it in. Yeah, Brandon Allen going for the spectacular there, but it was good defending from Sean Nealis of New York Red Bulls too as Lagos Kunga faces up once again 1v1. Kunga has been a live wire tonight. Grandison had it knocked down. You can see the, the foot skill of Lagos Kunga. He's got a lot of tricks in his bag. And he's still developing bag as well. One of the youngest players on the squad. Has provided a spark in the second half, assisting on Brandon Allen's goal. Tyler, moments ago, there was a couple of substitutions as well for New York Red Bulls, too. Number 47, John Tolkien is a 16-year-old coming through the New York Red Bulls, two academies, an extremely talented player, spent time with the first team as well. Comes on for Marcus Epps, so John Wolniak putting a lot of trust in, in, in the 16-year-old coming in, and he's a, he's a very talented player and had an assist and, and drew a penalty kick as well against Atlanta United, too, so... Exciting prospects coming up for, for Red Bulls 2. Tolkien having just debuted this month for New York Red Bulls 2. We'll see what he gives Wolnick. And the visiting side trying to hang on to a 2-1 to one lead. Hang on is exactly right, Tyler. This game is really, really flipped in this second half. And John Wolnick making a couple of really smart, probably more defensive substitutions for his side to, to, to try to hang on this game. And 
New York Red Bulls too to escape with a victory. Really good step right there from West Sharpie coming all the way over from left back to stop that Jared Stroud pass. Adam Najem. It's good from Adam Najem holding that ball up in midfield. See the pressure from Red Bulls too with four guys surrounding Cam Lilly, but he still escapes that pressure. That's, you want, that's what you want to see if you can escape that initial pressure and, and switch the field. It's wide open on the opposite side of the field. Relentless and persistent. Tonight exactly. from New York Red Bulls, too. Exactly. And, you know, Tyler, it's easier said than done. You know, me, me up here in the booth when you have four or five red jerseys just swarming you. Not to mention the fact that everybody's gassed at this moment in the match. Stroud trying to get loose. Knocked back. Lemma. Ooh. Shot off the mark. It's really good pass from Chris Lemma into Vincent Bezicourt and puts it on his right foot, his weaker foot, cuts back onto his stronger left foot, but sails this ball just wide. Really fortunate for Jeff Caldwell, not one FC. Bezicourt earlier finished Stroud's miss that rebounded off the post. It's good pressure here from Elliot Collier, but you want to see the rest of his teammates helping him out. And as Elliot Collier wins a throw in. He's only got Adam Najem in range. I know FC needs to continue to, to get numbers forward. You know, you're still down in this game. You gotta, you gotta suck it up and, and really give it all you got in the last 10 minutes or so of this game. Lindley went for the intercept there, but now a sweep away from Tolkien. You can see Red Bulls too, just trying to clear their lines at all costs, even if it's not to any player in particular. It's a really good ball. Jorgensen. Andy Jorgensen. Stroud. What a tackle from Ewan Grandison. Goal-saving tackle from Ewan Grandison coming over from right back. Timely challenge. It's a really tricky touch there from, from Tolkien to evade that Josh Morton pressure earns inside a throw in. I think Grandison has had a really another really strong performance at right back. He's showed his strength and Hasn't given Jared Stroud an inch on that left-hand side. Cleared all the way across the field by New York Red Bulls. See the replay here. It goes through Josh Morton's legs, legs actually, and Hugh Grandison makes a fantastic tackle. There's a lot of contact with him and Jeff Caldwell and Jared Stroud on, on, on top of the six-yard box. Again, the defense holds. Allen offside for a moment and then kicked the ball at the assistant referee. Oh, he's showing a yellow. Yeah, well deserved from Brandon Allen. He knew as, as soon as he did it. I don't know if he, I don't, as you see the wry smile on his face, I don't know if he knew that the assistant referee was on that side over there. He, he knew he was offside, but a little frustration showed and he, and he Earns himself a much-deserved yellow card. Sebastian Elney going to be the final sub for John Wolnick's side. You see Vincent Bezicourt, the goal scorer, coming off. I thought he put in a really good performance, the, the first-team player for New York Red Bulls and New York Red Bulls, too. But you can see another very physically strong player in Sebastian Elenai coming in. Irrespective of the fatigue level and the heat out there, it looks like Memphis is having a harder time giving support to players with the ball at this moment. You wonder whether or not that can improve in the final eight minutes and change. The answer is it's going to have to improve if 
901 FC wants to get the, the second goal in this game and tie it up. You can see West Sharpie driving forward. This is better for 901 FC. Sharpie looking inward, and this one will be taken away. Don't forget, we will bring you our Buff City Soap Man of the Match after the game. Coming up on ESPN Plus and CW30. Will there be an equalizer? You can see how many numbers that Red Bulls 2 have behind the ball. All 11 players behind the ball. Looks like they're settling for their two goals in this game. And, and if it stands, of course, they'll win this game. But I don't want to see able to apply a lot of pressure to that New York City, or excuse me, New York Red Bulls two back line. We'll see if they can continue to get the ball into Brandon Allen's feet to get his second goal. Would be the second one goal win for New York Red Bulls two over this Memphis side. Following their 3-2 win back on March the 29th. Grandison with a little window. And Scarlett clears him out there. See Tim McQueen still with a lot of energy, trying to spur his players on, bring energy from that sideline. He knows that it's hot out there. He knows it's warm out there. And they're facing a big, strong team in Jordan Scarlett and New York Red Bulls too. But still a good amount of time to go left in this game for 901 FC to get an equalizer. Memphis definitively had the juice early on in the second half with Lagos Kunga coming on, providing his boost. They've got to find one more. And that's really not the way they're going to do it. Tyler with only Brandon Allen and Elliot Collier up top going against four and five New York Red Bulls, two players. They're going to have to get Cam Lindley and Adam Najem joining them in the attack. Kunga. It's good pressure from Lagos. Morton. Finding Collier. Couldn't keep the footing. Yeah, I think the fatigue is starting to set in a little bit for Elliot Collier and his teammates. Unable to keep their feet. You see a lot of space for New York Red Bulls, too, in the middle of the field. Good deflection by Morton. Yeah, Morton did just enough to deflect that ball as it skimmed over his head out of bounds for Red Bulls to throw in. Memphis only goal tonight coming from Brandon Allen in the early moments of the second half. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A Mid-South. The Memphians looking for one more. Which would be an unlikely equalizer against one of the top teams in the league. Kunga has been the catalyst. Lagos Kunga. Collier now. A little oh. too much. I think Elliot Collier might have made the wrong decision on that play. He was trying to feed Lagos Kunga as he was bursting into the 18 yard box, but he had Brandon Allen wide open to his left. As you can see the replay here, he elects to go for Lagos Kunga. Excellent clearance by. Jordan Scarlett, but you can see Brandon Allen with his hands open. He's wide open at the top of your screen there. Could have put it on his left foot. Might have been able to find an equalizer. Just didn't see him. Sharpie to the back post. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. A brace for Brandon Allen. Square in the 86th. Brandon Allen, two against his former club. As he celebrates, what a ball from West Sharpie. Left footed ball. Brandon Allen was wide open at that back post. So you can see the re replay here. Wes Sharpie chips in a beautiful ball into Brandon Allen on that back post as he finishes it with his right foot. That's a vintage Brandon Allen goal. That's what he's best at doing. He's a fox in the box. Straight over Evan Luro's head. Perfect ball directly onto Brandon Allen's back foot. 2-2, Brandon Allen with the equalizer. That is a fantastic piece of work 
both from Sharpie and from Allen. You can tell how fired up Allen is. He's been sitting on nothing forever for this Memphis side, and two this evening have keyed him up. Absolutely. You can see what it means to Brandon Allen. You can see that when he gets service in good positions that he, he can score and he can, he can finish chances. It's been a fantastic second half from 91 FC, completely different from that first half. Tim O'Queen and his side have really brought the energy and have given the fans something to cheer about. And we'll see if they'll go for that third goal and, and try to get three points out of this game. And with Memphis 901 FC having scored twice tonight, you score with Papa John's. Use the code SCORE twice to receive half off your next order. Better ingredients, better pizza. That's Papa John's. Memphis has the recipe tonight. Everything involving Brandon Allen. A little Allen here, a little Allen there, and a little Sharpie contributing. Absolutely. Brandon Allen has done extremely well, as has Lagos Kunga and Elliot Collier. Lagos Kunga has come into this game and completely changed it. Collier. Oh, that's a tough challenge from Jordan Scarlett directly on Elliot Collier's ankles. And Collier is pounding the ground in pain right there. Definitely a, a yellow card for, for Jordan Scarlett, a really tough challenge. He might have gotten some of the ball, but got a ton of both of Elliot Collier's ankles. See on the replay here, Elliot Collier takes a little bit of a missed touch, and Scarlett gets a little bit of the ball initially, but his momentum carries through both of Elliot Collier's ankles and the snow plowed right into him. Absolutely, and you can see you can see Elliot Collier is in a lot of pain right now. Not much time left in this game. We'll see if he can if he can stay in it. Nonetheless. If this is how it ends, you have certainly snatched a point from the jaws of certain defeat. Absolutely. It's been a fantastic comeback from Memphis 901 FC. And now Tim McQueen has to make a choice. You know, do you go for three points in this game or, or do you do you sit back and, and settle for one point at home against a, a playoff bound, surely New York Red Bulls two side that's coming off an 8-1 thrashing of Atlanta United 2. You know, for me and personally, you know, I'm, I'm in my opinion, I'm greedy. You know, you're at home. You know, you're sitting towards near the bottom of the table right now. You need a signature win, and I think this is a good opportunity to do it. You've certainly seen this team compete at a level that's equaled one of the top teams in the league this year, and that's being at times rare based on their record where they are at the bottom of the table. Maybe one does you no good at this point because you've got a spiritual win. Even if you don't get the one, you end up losing, but three would be gigantic. I think three would be absolutely gigantic. And you can see that the squad, they're, they're capable of doing it. I think it's been an attitude adjustment um, for the squad. It doesn't look like Elliot Collier is going to be able to continue into this game. That's that's really unfortunate for 901 FC. That left boot looks real tender. Yeah, he won't be returning into this game as we have the fourth official indicates we have five minutes of stoppage time. So with the foul and the card, Birch will set up just outside the circle. Brandon Allen, the man tonight, at the top of the 18. Five minutes of stoppage time. Lofted for Morton. And a host of red bodies in there. Absolutely, and you can see Memphis 901 FC playing with only 10 men right now because they've used up all three of their substitutions. And with that Elliott Collier in, uh, injury, he's forced to come off the field. So it's going to be hard for 901 FC to look for that go-ahead goal and, and earn three points in this game. Brutal timing for the Collier injury right there. As Birch will send it clear. It's definitely a buzz kill for 901 FC, but if you can have maybe one or two more surges forward, you never know what can happen, or try to get a set piece or a corner kick, and anything can happen at the end of this game. Five minutes of stoppage time, as we mentioned, between Memphis 901 FC and New York Red Bulls 2. See Tim O'Queen wanting that throw in to be further back. I think Giannis Luba took some liberties there and stepping forward and gaining a few more yards in that throw in, but we'll play on, says Daniel Gutierrez. Nealis. Copy. 
It's going to be really tough right now. There's going to need to be a lot of mental focus and concentration for 901 FC. You only have 10 men. And you can see Red Bulls 2 starting to apply a little bit more pressure. They might try to go for the for the game winner now since they're they're a man up. You can tell they've got a little bit more pep in their step after Elliot Collier was forced to leave the field. Nealis once again. Strong run from Buckmaster. Toward the touchline, Stroud there, and not clear. It's good positioning from Cam Lindley. It was an important interception as Jorgensen was wide open. It looked like between the PK spot and six yard box. It's a great ball from Jared Stroud. Played wow. in and a close chance. It's a decent parry from Jeff Caldwell, although it was parried in the middle of the box, but he had his trusty center back and captain Mark Burge waiting to clear that ball out of bounds. A lot of pressure being absorbed right now from 901 FC. Can they hold off? NY Red Bulls 2. New York. Playing with a little bit of blood in the water. You and Anderson strong once again earns a foul call on there. See the replay here. Good strike there from Buckmaster. Good save from Jeff Caldwell and cleared it out of bounds from, from Mark Birch. I think now, Tyler, with, with 10 men and about a minute left, I think you, you probably settle for the draw in this game as that would be absolutely soul crushing if Red Bulls 2 were able to, to get another one and, and win this game. No time to let the guard down. Red Bulls can score quickly. You're exactly right. You see Josh Morton takes a, a strong professional foul at midfield there. I, I'm fine with that foul. Stops play for a little bit and allows your side to get numbers in behind the ball. Luba. Coffee. See Red Bulls 2 being very patient now. This is who they want the ball to, Chris Lima. Caldwell. Ooh. Right place, right time, coming off the line. It's a great job from Jeff Caldwell coming off of his line. See Josh Morton left that ball. There was a long way for that ball to travel to be able to leave it. And you saw Elne was lurking there, waiting to pounce on that ball, but Jeff Caldwell able to save it in the end. That ball cleared out of bounds by Jordan Scarlett. This will give 901 FC a few precious moments to be able to rest and kill a little bit more time in this game so that they can earn themselves a draw. Grandison. Allen, it's already made his mark on this game. It's a great battle from Brandon Allen on Jordan Scarlett. He was able to save that ball from being a goal kick into a throw in at the corner, and that's the end of this one. One point that somewhat feels like three this evening as Memphis 901 FC draws with New York Red Bulls 2, 2-2 two -two here at AutoZone Park. Brandon Allen a brace, his first goals for Memphis 901 FC. Back in a moment at AutoZone Park, Brandon Allen in Memphis able to draw tonight with New York Red Bulls 2-2-2. Two, two, two.
games, he kind of kind of leaves. So at least don't. Th The final here at AutoZone Park, a draw 2-2 between Memphis 901 FC and visiting New York Red Bulls 2. An improvement upon what these two teams had in March when Memphis lost by a goal. Our Buff City Soap man of the match, no doubt about it this evening. Brandon Allen with a brace of goals, his first in 901 Blue. Brandon Allen, much deserved Buff City Soap man of the match. As you said, Tyler, two goals, both of them coming within the six yard box. He's a fox in the box, as they say. Those are the positions that he likes to be in. Left-footed goal and right-footed goal. All he was missing was one with the head, and that would have been a hat trick. But great performance from Brandon Allen getting his first two goals for 901 FC. And they will need his contributions down the stretch if they are to have success. Four shots tonight for Allen. Two of them on target. Both of them went through. And I think he owes a credit as well to Wes Sharpie and to Lagos Kunga for giving him the right position to be in. We've got our final stats as well. These have changed a little bit since we went to halftime break. Still the shot count well in favor of Red Bulls too, but J.J. Greer, Memphis, able to win a little bit more in the second half than they won in the first half. Yeah, I thought this was a tale of two halves tonight, Tyler. Memphis 901 FC with the insertion of Lagos Kunga really brought the energy in the second half and were able to really take it to New York Red Bulls too. And we're really unfortunate that Elliot Collier suffered that injury in the end or else they might have been able to push for that third goal and that winner um, against New York Red Bulls too. But definitely the best half of soccer I think that 901 FC has played this year. And I think this is, this is you know, a, really a moral victory. And as you said, you know, it, it was a draw tonight, but the fans gave the squad a standing ovation tonight after this game as they were really pleased to see that fight and that energy to be able to come back from two goals down. Two goals down becomes a 2-2 draw between Memphis 901 FC as well as New York Red Bulls 2. Bluff City Mafia able to celebrate a little bit this evening as they finally play dead even against a very good team. It was all New York Red Bulls 2 early on, but Memphis facing one of the top five teams in the league Able to come back with a brace from Brandon Allen, assist from Lagos Kunga, as well as Wes Sharpie, getting Memphis the point this evening in AutoZone Park. The final tonight for J.J. Greer. For Mark King, I'm Tyler Springs. Memphis 901 FC draws 2-2 with New York Red Bulls 2. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.